Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Thank y'all for staying with us in this late hour. 804 402 2893 is the number to dial to be down with the flagship show of Legacy Internet Radio. Radio. The Dating Pool Diva is continuing her leading of the Diva Diaries. Diva, you up. What you got? Okay, I have um, another Steven Sykes question or a Michelle Robinson question. Do you, you guys have a preference? Let's go to Michelle. We just did a Steven. Let's do Michelle. All right. Michelle says, and it's quite suspect, she says, I have a friend, you know, friend. Yeah. Who's yeah, right. The air court, the air court yeah. friends. friends. Yeah, right, so, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Girl, you know, we know you're listening. We know it's you, but it's all right. Cool. <laughs> Who's involved with someone, but recently another man approached her and wanted to take her out and wanted her number. She got his number instead. Would you consider this cheating? It's not cheating, but it's real foul. Yeah, very foul. Okay. Because she should have never taken his number. Yep. If she, wanted, if she was happy with the man that she was, she would have never taken his number. I'm sorry I'm in a relationship. Yep. It's time to move on. Keep yep. going. Thank you, but no thanks. That is foul. That's not cheating, though. Does it really matter? That's foul. You taking another man's number and you in a relationship with somebody? Okay. That's foul. You know what that's called? That's called getting backups just in case what you got don't work out. Mm -hmm. So it's a setup for cheating. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can call it cheating. You can call it whatever. It's foul. Mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't have to be cheating. It's foul. Right, right, right. Because right. clearly she has some inconsistencies in her relationship that she currently has. So she is like, I think I'm going to look for a backup just in case. Just in case. Emergency. It's, exactly. It's Women got cheating. those dudes. It's not cheating, but the question that you should ask yourself if you're in a relationship is if he did the same thing, how would you feel? Yep, right. man, he would, he would get he would get okay, cussed so, out from but, up, okay, down, so left, that's right. Fine. So if if you would think it was cheating if he did it, then it's cheating if you do it. I don't feel like it's cheating, but if that's how you would feel, then so, you shouldn't do it. I mean, I, I agree, Rube. I'm with you 100. percent If you're gonna go take somebody else's number, and you're with me on a period. No, that's that's cheating because yeah. you know let, what? You let, let me turn around I, and do the exact same thing. Hell, you even let me smile at somebody else, and we're if, if we're together. We're you can't even stare nobody long enough. Yo, real talk. Let me let me un, let me hear the question one more time. I want to make sure that I got the full. Man. Damn it, I'm listening. This ain't for me. It's, Don't you got a piece of paper with all can this I, in it? Can I host the show? This, this can I can is, I host the show? Y'all want to host the show? Y'all want to show? I mean, I can't because I, like I, I can't. I'm selling airtime on Legacy and that radio. Y'all want to host shows? Yeah, because we can't. We can get your own show. Anyway, Diva, <laughs> Diva, <laughs> one more time because I, I there's there's a method to my madness. Yes, yeah, suckers. Michelle's friend, suckers, is involved with someone, but recently another man approached her, wanted her number. The friend got his number instead. Is this cheating? What does involved mean? Uh, it could be right. Anything. Are they exclusive? It, the fact right. that you started it off by saying it could be means that it is a gray area. Right, it is a gray exactly. area. Exactly, which is the reason why I re clarified it. Serious. Ruben Jones, to me that's serious. Well, right. here's a, but here's a question. Yeah. Well, what, if you're dating. not, but the question is, if you're not in a relationship with somebody, then it's not a problem. But if she is having, oh, really? Should have done that. Then you in a relationship with somebody. Twice about. Oh yeah! If you have to ask the question, <laughs> if then you're in a relationship, you know you're doing wrong. That's like if your mama told you, "Look here, don't go over there and pick up that piece of candy." But my sister would go over there and pick it up and give it to me. Am I still wrong for eating that piece of candy? Yeah. Hell yeah! And you gonna get the whooping because I gave it to you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> she. And then real talk, she took the number so old boy couldn't call her and blow up her phone first. What? Right, right, right. That's kind of sneaky. That's dirty. Yeah. It's have foul. The, has the couple, my, my, my oh, question geez. is, has the couple defined themselves as a couple? Have the couple, you know, decided that they're exclusive with each other? You know, there's, there's variables here that I think that we're not. They could be, be, be just dating. I, well, grab mic. That's they why. could be dating, you know, to find the right relationship but you could go out dating. that's not what she said it, it may not be, she said involved serious. but yeah. there's a gray area it depends yeah. it depends you know, look so it, 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 depends, on. it depends on the extent of relationship mm -hmm. it depends on the definition of the relationship as defined as the people in the relationship not none of the other suckers on the outside of it well how about this it Let could me, be uh, an open relationship well we don't know that then, then there's no question yeah 
But here's his situation. The fact that she said involved means that there's, there's something going on. Because if you were just dating around, it wouldn't have mattered. Mm -hmm. But if you're involved, that means you are invested in something more than your basic. Therefore, I think it's foul. I'm not saying Very. she's cheating. I'm saying that it's foul because you took his number. You shouldn't have taken it. You shouldn't have taken his number if you were not involved. Okay, this is a backup question. All right. Anybody that wants to answer it. Have you guys ever did anything like this nope. while you were involved? No. Nope. Have you ever gotten anyone else's number? And yep. uh, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I did it before. I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and lie, you know. Um I think because the relationship was questionable, that's why I took somebody else's number. No, I just took the number because I wanted to do it. It won't it ain't had nothing right, to do with right, nothing else. Right, right. It's it's funny, you know it But you're a heathen. Okay, I'll take that too. Call it for what it is. If you feel comfortable or if you haven't, like Marcus J. said, if you haven't put that stamp on what you believe your relationship is or if you just me and didn't give a good God darn, then you did what you did and you take your chances. But you always are honest with people. I think that that's another misconception. If you tell everybody up front where it is, hey, look here, I got a girl over there, but I'm going to get your number. Is that all right? And you say yes. Who, who, who cheated? Yeah. And What's I, but the famous quote from our mother, Joseph, about telling people up front. Oh, wow. She brought moms in it. I know, right? <laughs> what about it? What she said? I'm going to tell you up front. Oh, so, so you don't, you don't stick, stick out, out in the, the back? back? Yeah. <laughs> Damn, they do that. I know. Yo, that's yo. hardcore. <laughs> you saw that, yo. Yeah, but the thing about uh, it is, I, I guess my thought process is if you question yourself whether you took the number, it's already messed up. Exactly. No question. Because if. If you just take a number, it's like, huh, I just put it in my phone. Boom. Move Michelle, on. Michelle K says she took the number not to be rude. What y'all think about that? Oh, that's, a bunch no. of, that's a cop out. That's no, a cop out. <laughs> Guys get dissed every day. No. Don't even come with that. No. Nah, no. But she kept that's, that's the number, good, right? She's also, she's also saying that it's not her. Well, well it, it oh, we know it's, it's not you. It's not her. If it's not her. Because, I mean, nah, nah. Why? Oh, ah, okay. Uh, give a, give give Nisi the true. mic. Give, that's, give, that's give, true. Take that's the mic. Take the mic, Nisi. What you saying? I said that I take a lot of numbers because I'm single and I can do that. Like I'm just like filling everybody out for now. So if I like you, we can talk. If but if you were like involved, you, you would you have taken that number? Yeah. If you were involved, because she's still single. Yeah. Because we haven't, we not, haven't made a we haven't made a commitment yet. Like we're not official. It's not. We're just exclusively dating you're single we're, not, until you're we're not official so until then i can talk to whoever i please if you're going to do the same thing so what's the difference between involved and if an official if you're involved with somebody it's like what you're it's you're together without a title basically if you have a title added on to it like y'all boyfriend or girlfriend husband and wife that's different <laughs> I, I could in some it. cases I, I, I could dig it you know ain't no half step on marcus J. I, I think it's a lot of semantics going on here Semantics I think somebody's not being truthful. Well, I, you know, I'm not going to suggest that somebody's not being truthful. I think it's semantics. When the person is speaking, the person is speaking what their truth is. Their truth might be different than what your truth is. I think there's different definitions, which is where the problem is. You might feel how you feel, and another person might feel how they feel. The problem is if you're dealing with someone who you need to deal with and your interpretation is different than yours, then, yeah, you're going to have a problem. The good thing for you, Big Rube, is you're not dealing with Nisi over there. <laughs> that's the, that's nah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? And Nisi need that. that so many. Nisi, I feel from Nisi, her, Nisi, from Nisi, I, and I call her Nisi. That's, that's, that's Big Brother Big Joe's you know, daughter. And, you know, I call her Nisi. I've been calling Nisi since she was four years old. I, but the, tru the truth is... You just, y'all perspectives are different. Well, and I, have a I question understand. Now. Can I finish my no. point? Yes. <laughs> I cut your damn mic off. Come on. All right. Your perspective is different from hers because your wording is different than hers. The fact of the matter is, if you was dealing with her, y'all would need to have a discussion. Of and course. It, obviously, y'all would need to have a discussion yeah. in the we conversation. So, so y'all have a discussion in the conversation so that the words would be consistent so that when 
you say one like thing her. and she says another thing y'all on the same page that's where we get into a problem because we get into thinking that what we think is okay with what somebody else think that we ain't even dealing with but they ain't your shit I deal with your shit i'm trying to however my question is that you gonna deal with your shit i've already done one well deal with your but, shit but on the, this next but the question que- hold on the question is why deal would you shit. ask why would you ask a question like that because to me if you're involved or whatever you are, why should it be a question whether you take the number or not? Well, I think that that goes back to the point that Marcus was just making is that it's different perceptions, different definitions. So you all might not be defining involved in the same way or in the case between you two sitting in this room, she's a whole lot younger than you. So the generations are different. And what they describe as involved or hooking up or, you know, we dating or that's my boo thing, whatever, it's a whole different perspective than someone our age would have about it. But it could just be, to me, involved means, you know, you don't go out the house unless I say so. Or <laughs> to you, involved <laughs> could mean something completely that's different. Slavery. <laughs> it's called slavery. Okay. All right, anybody else on that one, or should we transition? Move on. Let's move on. All right, this one is uh, something kinky, uh, Stephen says. Have you done something kinky or out of the ordinary for your partner that you didn't like, but you did it to please him or her, but that person still keeps asking you to do it even though it makes you uncomfortable, but it gets that person off? What do you do? All right, anybody want to jump in on that? Anybody? Did you tell the person that it made you uncomfortable? Well, chances are they didn't because they're trying to please that other person. Well, if you didn't tell, you can't be mad if somebody keeps asking you to do it. That's true. That's true. Communication is key. Just say no. If you don't want to do it, don't do it, man. I'm not doing nothing I don't want to do. Everything kick I like doing, I like doing. But if you love that person, you may Mm-mm. do some things outside no. of your uh, comfort zone. Now, there are a lot of people, who, do, that's, that's lot of people who don't do certain things because they don't like it, and they still with whoever. And you still need to communicate. If you love that person, y'all should be able to talk about it. Right. If you love me, you already know. No, not necessarily, because people can't read minds. So you can't say, if, if I love you, I already know. I don't know what you're thinking. They can look on your face and say, it. See, I almost slipped. But <laughs> I said the, I said the F word earlier, and I never say the F word on the show. So please don't slip. No, but no, I, I, I can dig, I, say, I can, I can see kinky, how it almost happens. And I'm just I'm just looking at it like this. If I don't know what men means. have issues, a lot of men have issues with certain places being played with. That you might got somebody who like that. Your girl might like to do that to you or for you, and you sitting there looking. For for, well, whatever. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, Chief. Hey, this is a grown up show. I'm with you, but big. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm with yeah. you, big bro. if you don't like it, you say, Hey, I, I don't cool like that. it. Yeah. Cut it out, pineapples. I'm not doing it for you. <laughs> pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> Safe word. Safe fruit. Safe word. Pineapple. Mangoes. <laughs> star fruit. Papaya. Wow. <laughs> Kale. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. That's why you got something to contribute to that? Um, I just wouldn't do it in the first place. I mean, if it's something I'm, I'm comfortable with, then he already knows that um, I'm uncomfortable. You want to say something, baby? Hey, yo, peace, fam. <laughs> See y'all later. And that w- she, she, she finally spoke, y'all. She it finally was nice spoke. having you guys. Thank you for contributing to the Diva Diaries. Later. Y'all have a nice, nice night. <laughs> <laughs> Send us a question. <laughs> so Don't yeah, no, okay, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't do it in the first place. It's, right. it's a conversation. If you're in a relationship, and at this point, you're saying it's somebody that you love. Mm-hmm. So this is something that we've talked about. We've talked about all sorts of things at this point, and so sex is one of those things that we had a conversation about. Mm-hmm. So if there's something that I'm not uncomfortable with, and in every relationship you go through that conversation, I mean, if your relationship is that intense, right. you go and, and you do talk about your likes, your dislikes, your wants, your needs. So these are things that come up. If it's something that I don't like doing, 
Right. You will know that I don't like doing. This will never happen. There, you, there's really no need for us to further the discussion on it. I'm a straightforward, no, it's not right. going to happen. There's nothing that can happen to change my mind. It won't happen. So I wouldn't be doing it in the first place. And see, we're a lot um, older than we were maybe in the beginning when we first started exploring mm -hmm. different sexual things. You mm -hmm. know, when you're young, let's mm -hmm. say 20 years ago, mm -hmm. 25 years ago or whatever, and mm -hmm. you're just starting out with your sexual experiences, mm -hmm. you don't really know what you like or mm -hmm. what you, what's, you know, too far or too much. I, you know? I, I don't know. I, in, in my head, even when I was 20, mm -hmm. 25, even from whenever until now, there are things that are point blank no's. Right. And they have been no's, and they're going to be no's for the rest of my life. Okay. That's just the way it is. Right. Like R. Kelly getting down in the shower. That type yeah, of thing. please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. I mean, without, I guess, getting too, too much into it. I mean, you know, it is what it is. If you don't. If you don't like it and you don't talk, then unfortunately you get what you get. You put yourself in that situation. Yeah. However, you know, if I, I, I don't know, it's just like it, it, it sucks on one hand. It's like you may have you may get yourself a partner who is the opposite of you on that level. You may like kinky, but they're really traditional. And then it's like. Come on, will you just do something else? I mean, so it's one of those things where you got to talk it out. I mean, but, you know, the important thing is you know what you're getting yourself into before you go further. Because then you, if, if your partner says no, you can never be mad at your partner, you know, especially if you decide to forward on your career with them, right. your life with them. Yeah, that's, okay. that's your fault. And you may just be incompatible sexually, you know. And you have to decide, is that a major factor in your relationship? Yeah. Sex is always going to be a major factor. Yeah. It depends I mean, yep. on the person. It don't depend. Nah. Sex is always well, going to be a major factor. Here's the deal with that, man. You, you, you with someone, you're supposed to grow. You're supposed to grow. And if you with someone who doesn't fulfill your needs, you're going to be mad. You're going to have resentment. And depending on the individual and the person, how that resentment comes out can manifest itself in many different ways. And if you're the person that's saying no to certain things, then you got to be prepared for what you get. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, real talk. I mean, if you if you with someone and they got needs that you're not prepared to fulfill, then it's going to be a problem right. no matter what either of you say. It's going to be a problem. Even if you don't say nothing, it's a problem. Even if it don't come out every single day, it's a problem. And so you can sit here and play the, well, if they don't do something that I don't want to do, like Joe was saying before he left, you know, if you want to do something I don't want to do, then I'll just, man, f forget that, Joe, man, for real. I mean, the truth of the matter is, once you decide that you're going to be with somebody forever, forever means forever. And guess what? Forever is a long time. <laughs> it's right, like forever right. means forever. And so if you got shit in your mind that you want to do and you with somebody ain't trying to do it, then what are you supposed to do? Suppress that forever? Right. That's going to come mean, out some kind of way. How is it going to come out is debatable individual to individual, but it's going to come out straight up. It's going to come out. Yeah. I, I don't know um, if it's a flat out no. I don't know how much of a conversation or a compromise you can come to um, if you're like totally on opposite ends when it comes to anything, really, but the sexual uh, stuff too. I would agree with that, Marcus. Nah, man. You know, yeah. that's the land. It's a big deal. Yeah. It's a big deal. Anybody else want to add anything? Yeah, if you, I mean. If you're not down with whatever your partner's with, that's a long life. Yeah, forever's a long so time. So you either, you either can deal with that. If you deal with that, then you have no excuses because you know what you're getting into right. when you do I see, deal. I disagree with that shit, man, for real. I do because people who ain't married always say that shit. 
<laughs> people, well, no. people who married never say, well, if you deal with it, if you knew, deal. people who married know better. People who ain't married say that. But uh, what I'm saying is. What you saying, if man? She, I mean, if, if, the, if your partner are doing what you want to do before you get married, why would you marry them? Okay, but what if you're dealing with a situation where things ain't the same like they used to be? So you know what I'm saying? Like, it's this, is, this is what I'm saying. Like, People can have an opinion, and that's great. But when you don't know, you don't know about what you're dealing with from person to person. You see what I'm saying? And so when people say, well, you, if you've known before, then you got to deal with it. Like, everybody changes. Everybody evolves, you know? When you, when, why do you think people be married 20 years and they freaking get divorced? <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, those are the people who should have knew better 10 years ago? Really? You got married after 20 years. Yeah. That means that you put up with shit for 15. But I guess what That I, you was pissed at at five. But <laughs> what I'm, but I'm saying, but if you pissed off before you get married. No, we're not talking about before you get married. Not in this part of the conversation. This, that part of the conversation moved on. You can say, because you're not going to get married to somebody or, 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 or engage in a long-term relationship with somebody that's not fulfilling you. Why would you do that? That doesn't make sense. People do. That, that, I'm not know, saying. I'm, okay, I'm, but we're not talking yeah. about those people. We talking about the people who got married and they was grinning and smiling and loving life and all that stuff. And then times and life and stuff happened, and eventually they was like, "Man, this is some bullshit right here." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they dealt with it. Right. Then what you do? Because people grow in different ways, and I think that this this is what we do on this show. We talk about what people don't want to talk about. That's why we talk about race. And we talk about race in a way that makes you uncomfortable. We won't make you uncomfortable because it's going to make you think. If you're going to think, then that means you may make changes. If you make changes, then you might be happier or whatever. And we're going to apply that to this discussion. Just because you married somebody or engage in a long-term relationship with somebody who made you so happy, made you blissful, and just made you giddy, doesn't mean that 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 50 years later, that you still feel that way. Don't you reserve the right to have different feelings and evolve and change in different ways. Of that course you do. Of course you do, right. And so when you look at the couple that got divorced after 20 years, don't you step back and wonder what the hell was up with that? Like, yeah, seriously. I've seen that a lot with friends and you see family it. and stuff. And you, know mean, what, and you know what it usually is? It's the kid that graduated high school and they're like, ah. Whew. That's what kept the glue that <laughs> kept it together, right? ain't do this right? shit no more. Like, seriously. Right. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I, I think, again, if we're going to keep it real, we're going to keep it real. And it's possible. You make the face, y'all. Well, I, okay, well, I wasn't I was looking, looking at it at that point of view. I'm going to I wasn't looking at it at that point of view. Well, what point of view are you looking at it at? At before marriage and all that stuff. That's yeah. what I was looking at. I wasn't looking at, hey, well, you but, married 10 years right, and now they still not doing yeah, it. Yeah, but what I'm saying to you, Ruben, the reason I, I, I get that. But what you're not understanding is who's going to marry somebody who's not doing it for them? Why would you do that? But people do. That's the crazy there, part. Maybe some other reason you, you love them. Yeah, yeah but I mean, uh, 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 we, I, you know, I'm, I'm even going even beyond sex and all that kind of stuff because. The day you say word, I'm going to do this, I do, you got to be all in. That it, At least that day. At, le at least on that day, you all in. But I feel like I agree with Ruben on this. There's little small signs before that something may come down the pike. You know, I mean, of course, you don't know where the future holds. But there's usually a little sign okay, that that person's obsessive or that person doesn't like to compromise or that person don't like to clean up. Like those type of things come out before, I think, before you get married and you were so lovey-dovey and it may have been sex that clouded your judgment. Yeah. You ain't see the, the stuff that broke you up 20 years later. Or other things other than sex. Oh, he does well with this or she does well with that. Sex is okay, but I, I might be able to teach him a little bit more. You know, that type of crap. I mean, I'm not saying it happens all the time, but it does happen when, you know what, you know, sex isn't that, isn't that great, but the longer we be together, it'll get better. 
you know, some people do get married and say stuff like that to themselves. Yeah, Whether it's right or wrong, it is yeah, what it is. I'm what sure it do. is. You know, you, you can replace sex with any kind of personality trait with that. Correct. You know, maybe he's an asshole and he's a knucklehead, but I can change him. I mean, you can interchange anything you yeah. want into that. You know, we were talking about sex because sex was what came up. Correct. But you can interchange any personality trait into that. And say whatever it is you want to say. The reality is, when you get to a certain point, you're like, man, pff, <laughs> what am I doing here? At the end of the day, I have a hard time accepting that the average person, I don't know everybody, I can only go by averages. The average person is not going to get married saying, word, this person is jacked up, but I'm going to marry him anyway. The average person, I, just, I can't wrap my well, brain around it. you have those rose-colored glasses on when before. Well, and then later I, on, it oh, gets okay, clearer. Okay, okay. Well, clearer. then maybe they rose colored. But the point is, is rose colored as they are, on that day, you like word. I'm going to marry John Smith, mm -hmm. Jane Doe. Right. You're not going to marry an asshole on purpose. Right. You're just not going to do it. Like that's the point that I'm like, yo, y'all, am, am I disconnected from this conversation, listeners? You know, you know, I mean, am I disconnected? No, or, you're not. Uh, you're not. I, mean, I, I agree with you, actually. Once it starts to go haywire and, you know, and I, I believe just like the diva said, you know, there are little signs. I mean, it's, sex can't be the thing that blinds you completely. You you see it. You don't want to see it. Right. You see it. You don't you want see to see roses it. No, flowers. you're not only seeing roses. I'm yeah. telling you, you you see Birds it. Chirping. You pay attention. You see it. You know what you like. You know what you don't like. When something happens that you don't like, you know it. Right. Okay? If somebody does something to you that you don't like, you know it. So whether you are so in love and blah, 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 this is good and that is good, if something happens and you don't like it no matter how small it is, you can't make that change. You can't make the other person change from being that way. It is what it is. If you don't like it now, you're not going to like it 10 years from now. Right. 10 years from now, there's a whole lot of other shit that's going to come out that you're not going to like. So there's no reason to say that you're going to go through it now, you know, and think I'm going to change it or, or whatever. I'm not changing nothing. Here's the problem. We figure it out, we discuss it, we get through it. If we can't, then we can't. But I can't see somebody saying, oh, well, everything else is so great, so I'm just going to go ahead and marry Johnny. I don't think so. Right. Unfortunately, it happens way too much. And, and when we're in our 20s and even 30s, we're totally different than later on in life. You know, we, we don't even know what we're going to blossom into. But you we're know not later saying? on in life. We are in our 30s and 40s, so mm -hmm. we can't I mean, saying, speak like, to those when you, people. When you're really young. You know, you don't, you're happy and you, you think things are going to be beautiful, but you don't realize that later on you're going to have these certain quirks about yourself and that that person is going to have certain quirks about themselves because they grow into it. Right. Now, you was born grumpy, you say. Yeah. I, but I, some I, people I, I grow grumpy. into grumpy. I was, I was grumpy as a baby. Right. Yeah. Not everybody's grumpy when they're a baby. Correct. They may have been happy-go-lucky, and something happened in their life. Nah, yo. Yeah. Something know. happened to grumpy. steer their whole personality. Oh, well, yeah, we know not you, but other people, it happens. Right. I can, like, see a picture of you in, in utero like this. Right. Yeah. Face all balled up. You know? Yeah, I was mad. <laughs> I was all balled up. It was hot in there. <laughs> Tight and crampy and stuff. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't stretch. I was like, damn, my leg hurt now. <laughs> Were you on time? I don't know. You gotta ask my mama. You oh, ask me everybody for. asked their mama. I know that. you was almost early. I, I was late. I was three weeks I late. I didn't want to come out. <laughs> you see, that's why. You see, you got to be a long time <laughs> listener of "Ain't No Has to Have Mark J" to get that reference and whatnot. Yep. So, my co-host, you just definitely brought it home for me right now. "Ain't No Has to Have Mark J," live from the Den, LegacyInternetRadio.com. Uh, live from the Den. Of course, we are live from. Uh, the Den of Legacy in that Radio, we're the flagship show. We're on LegacyInTheRadio.com. Of course, you can follow us on TuneIn as well as on YouTube On Demand. Ain't no ass step on Marcus J. Um, Y'all want to continue? We we got more questions give from us, Stephen Sykes. Give, a, give us one more. We'll do one more. Okay. 
This one he really wanted me to address. It's on the Love Revolution page. And um, he says, does ring size matter? The actual fitting of the ring, not, not how big it is, but the fact that it's too small or it's too big. Can getting the size wrong mean it's not meant to be? So he, he brought this question up to say that he um, was in a situation, he proposed to someone, and the ring was too small. And so the person felt like, well, if you are supposed to be my husband-to-be, you would know my ring size. You would get it right. You wouldn't try to put a too small ring on my finger. So what, what do you guys think about that? Do you think that that's some kind of sign or um, indication that it's not going to work out? That sounds like an excuse. Okay. Explain to get it. out. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know any women who ever said, I don't want to marry you because you don't know my ring size. Mm -hmm. That is the dumbest thing I have ever heard. Yes. Because most women are usually happy that, that they're they haven't engaged in all this stuff. Yeah, ring so size, I, you don't care if that thing falls off your finger. As long as it stays there for the brief one to two seconds that you can show it off. I'm going to wear it one. on my pinky, honey. Why do you go jeweler? to my jewelry box and look at my other rings and get the size right? That's trifling. See, that's how maintenance is like a champ. <laughs> I, you know, and I've even seen women... The rings were too big. They would put their thumb underneath the ring when they were showing it to their girls and do it like that so it wouldn't move. Man, that's whack. You know, that's called an excuse to get out. You know, because you don't want to embarrass your dude by saying no. no. You want to be like, no, but you should love me because you should know my ring size. I mean, let's just be honest. What if you gained or lost some weight in the last mm -hmm. six weeks? You know, then it's not going to fit. Right. It just is what it is. That sounds like an excuse. What if you're just puffy this month? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you yeah, know. You know? Because there are many things you that could make mm -hmm. your fingers mm -hmm. get change. bigger or smaller. Mine change within the day. Yeah, that's, that's called whack and that's called an excuse. And Water retention and all of that. Mm -hmm. Man, that's called I ain't trying to be with yeah, you, but okay. I'm not going to tell you no because you just gave me this nice ring. I'm going to come up with something else. And that person clearly did. Right. Wish she could just been like, no. Nah. What do you think, Marcus? Uh, ring size is stupid to me. Mm -hmm. Every time I hear conversations come up, oh, the ring was too small. It's like, whatever. I mean, the dude bought your ring. He wouldn't have bought your ring if you wasn't important to him on some level. Mm -hmm. You know, if he bought you something that was within his financial responsibility, you want him to go broke trying to buy you a big ass ring when you're gonna be his spouse and y'all gonna have to do this thing, whatever this thing is together, and now y'all in debt because he bought you a big ass ring. Like to me, that's so superficial, you know, that it's, to me, it's like, come on, man. We yeah, talking- took it to the other ring size. Like it's not flashy enough. I just trip off of that because I'm like, come on, man. You know, there's, there, there's, there's, depending on what you listen to and who you listen to, there's sizes that you're supposed to get. It's supposed to be based on how much money you make and all that type of stuff. I don't even trip off that. I really don't. I don't even really trip off of that. Mm -hmm. If you're a man, you know what you can afford. Mm -hmm. You know what's within your financial wherewithal. And so as long as you do that, if she's tripping off of that, then she ain't the right chick for you. Move on, bruh. If you go and you get something that is legitimately within your mind, within your financial realm, uh -huh. and you present it to her like, "Yo, boo, I want to be with you forever. You my, you my girl, and you know whatever it is that that, that 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 you say," and then she's like, "Oh my God, that's too small. I ain't fooling with you." Or she gives you some sort of attitude behind it, man. Man, you know, do you I'm feel the same way about specific cuts too? That really shouldn't matter. Men don't care about that shit. A cut is a chick thing. We don't care about the cut. So we like really a, don't care about oh, the cut. Oh, I mean, yeah, we don't. But no, I'm just saying, I don't if, care about no if you got cut. your girl like the wrong cut, she said, I don't want to be with you. Read the comment. I mean, because Michelle's pretty much like, right, well, I think the ring, I think the size of the ring doesn't matter at all. At all. As long as it's a one carat princess or solitaire cut, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> you know, LOL. So, so, I mean, she, LOL is, 
you know, a lot of times you laugh to mass seriousness. Like yeah. she feels that way. Yeah. Oh, you and know? you only go for one character. She, she, if you she, don't cry about the, the you know, she's the, serious. The, the she, diamond. And yeah, she's serious don't about get that. One character, like, really? like seriously, I think you. I think here's what I think a man should do. A man should be wise enough to find out. However, his, whatever his means are, however you do it, whether you find out directly from her or you find out from a homegirl or whatever it is you do, find out what she wants and then get what she wants. As far as the size of the diamond, I mean, look, get what you can get. As far as the cut and the size of the, as, as far as the, you know, the makeup and the, all that type stuff, you do what you can do. Clarity in the cut, the seat, the triple yeah, C's, man. Yeah, man. But 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 if you get that wrong and she gives you a hard time, then she's superficial. She tripping off a ring. She ain't into you, bro. Yeah. She's more into the superficialness show. of the show. Because here's the thing that a lot of brothers miss. You know, we talk a lot about the ladies and what they need and all that kind of stuff, and that's fine. We want to be female centric and female sensitive, but the reality is they don't give a shit what we think. They freaking chasing each other, man. They get dressed for each other. Oh they, yeah, they get dressed for each other. I get dressed for me. Okay, okay. then all you right. get dressed for you. Fine. Yeah. But if you bought a girl a ring and she goes behind you to go the check first out how thing, much she that costs, she's not going to show her homeboys. She's going to show her home girl, girl. Look what he got me, girl, girl, girl. First thing she's going to do when you buy that ring is show all her girlfriends. That's it. That's so what you that buy it can, for. So she can show off and show her girlfriends how you better than their girlfriend's man. Come on, man. Don't act like we don't know the real deal. You know the real deal. You can read between the lines on that one. I, obviously, I'm not. So tell me what I'm missing. No, I agree. Oh, well, damn it. Then I thought we was about to fight. No. We're going to agree right now. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. We're going to close the segment out, but I got something real quick. All right. Name a TV show or a movie that best describes your relationship right now. Mine is living single. Mine is going with a win. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. I was going to ask you, with a lot of but movies. okay. I'm going with a lot of titles right now, but I'm going to go with that one. <laughs> Ruben? Oh, mine is Cancel. Cancel? Yeah. Is that a show? Nope, but that's what it is. Oh, it's, the is. show ain't even on. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Marcus. The Young and the Restless. The Young and the Restless. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I'll go with that. Bold and Beautiful. Bold and beautiful. <laughs> there you go. Ain't no ass All stepping right. with Marcus J. Live from the Den. Legacy Internet Radio. Dot com. We're going to take our final break of the night and when we come back we got our rants and we got our closings we got the crew we got the dating pool diva we got big rule and we got my co-host sy butler in the room ain't no high step on marcus j be back in a few minutes <laughs>